In this video, I'd like to show you something called Fresnel, which is our first basic shading principle that you're going to be using anywhere and everywhere from now on. And that's because basically everything in this world has a little bit of specular in it. Even things you would assume are basically diffuse, like wood or bricks or rubble and dust and sand. Everything has at least a tiny bit of reflection in it, even if it's very rough and you can hardly see it. And you might be able to get away with it, but if you want to be accurate and realistic, everything has reflections. So rather than bore you with some more theory, let's actually get started with shading the ninja. Now, what I'm going to show you this on is his shoulder pad over here, his right shoulder pad. So we can select that and hit the slash on the number pad, and that's just going to isolate it in our view. And the reason we want to do that is just so that it renders nice and quick, but also because the entire ninja doesn't fit on my GPU memory, but little pieces of it at one time are just fine. So let's open up the user preferences with Control Alt U and make sure that CUDA rendering is enabled with the GPU or more than one selected. And then of course, make sure it's actually using the GPU in the device over here. Okay, so if we hit Shift Z, it's going to start rendering in the viewport, which is great. But now, the material we have over here is just a plain diffuse color. It doesn't even use any nodes. So let's go to the node editor, hit use nodes, and you can see it's created some nodes over here for us, which is cool. Now, let's just get started, and I'll explain the Fresnel thing in a minute. So let's go ahead and add a image texture. And the one we use, the one we want for this, this object is shoulder R diffuse, which is over here and we can plug that straight into the diffuse bsdf but now as you can see it looks kind of strange i know for sure that this is the right texture but it doesn't look right and the reason for that is because we have a whole bunch of different uv maps over here we've got one for the dragon stencil which we'll get to at the end of this video and a uv map which i'm not quite sure what that's for actually and then the one for the leather um so Let's go ahead and choose the leather one for this texture, and for that we just need a UV map node. This was added in, I think, 2.71. If you don't see it, you should upgrade your blender, <laughs> or you can use the attribute node and type in the name of the UV map. Anyway, we'll just use this one, and select leather. So now when we plug that in, everything is going to look right. It's kind of dark up here, but that's because it's covered by another another model and we won't see this area. Okay, so that looks pretty cool, but unfortunately that's not our material. Leather is a little bit shiny and obviously it needs a bump map and that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and add our glossy shader. Now before I go any further, I'd like to enable an add-on that I rely on quite a lot. And it's actually another one that I helped with a little bit, and it's called the Node Wrangler. It was originally made by Bartek over here, um, and I just added a couple different features to it. So I'm just going to change this to suit my preferences, and there we go. Now this add-on basically just gives me a few useful little features, like if I Control Shift click on a node, it'll connect it to the output, and it gives me a nice lazy way to connect two nodes together without needing to go and try and click on those few little pixels over there. Anyway, I'm going to leave that enabled from now on, so if you see something funny that you can't seem to do, just make sure you keep that enabled as well. You don't have to, of course, but I like it. So, let's go and see what we can do to mix these two together. I'm going to add a mix shader, and of course connect that over there and swap these two around with Alt-S. Now, the reason for that is because the Fresnel node, which I'll need to get to in a minute, it gives us the roughness, ugh, not the roughness, the shininess or the reflectance of what we need uh, on one, on white, and what isn't reflective on black. And so that matches up with the fact over here. On zero or black, it's not reflective, and on one, it is reflective. But first of all, I'm going to connect the color to the glossy as well, because I think it looks kind of strange. It's a little bit too perfect. But I don't want to have it completely full of color like this. That looks even weirder, like some kind of metal. So instead, I'm going to add a mix RGB node over here, and just mix it with white a little bit. That's probably okay. Looks a little bit better. 
All right. And that is that. So let's go ahead and add the Fresnel. Now we have two choices of using Fresnel. We can either use the actual Fresnel node or the layer weight node. I'm going to use the layer weight node because it's a little bit easier to control. I'm not sure if it's inaccurate or anything, but it's much nicer to use. So let's just plug that in here and see what happens. Not very much. It sort of appears like we've just reduced the factor a little bit. But if we go and rotate the model and look at it with the light right behind it, it looks quite reflective all of a sudden. Much more reflective than when we were looking at it like this. And the reason for that is because Fresnel is just a function that gives us a lighter color on the edge and a darker color in the middle. And that is basically what Fresnel is. And that is why we need it quite a lot. Because in reality, all materials are more reflective on the edges than in the middle. It's kind of a law of physics. You have to obey it. It's everywhere. It's like if you were to try and skip a stone on a lake. You'll manage to skip it if you throw it at a very low angle, but if you try and throw it straight down, the stone is just going to sink. And it's the same for light rays reflecting off objects. So let's go and use that. I'm going to reduce the blend quite a bit because it's very shiny. Let's keep it on 0.1. That looks good. And let's go and take a look at what Lee did in the Blender internal. This is the original file that he shaded. And as you can see, I am looking at the same material on the shoulder. And it's got a whole bunch of different textures here. We've got some stitches. We've got a bump map. Two different ones for the diffuse. A color variation. Some more bump map. And the dragon stencil. So let's just take a look at the color variation first of all. And you can see that it's being used for the diffuse color and the specular hardness. Now, in Blender Eternal, the specular hardness was basically the size of the reflection, or the specular highlight, rather. So I believe a smaller hardness would mean a more spread out highlight, so it'll be a larger highlight, and a higher hardness will mean the specular highlight is much more concentrated in a small area, which is exactly the same as the roughness setting on our glossy shader. As you can see, with the roughness on 0.2, the specular highlight is quite big, and as I reduce that, it becomes so small that it's actually a reflection. So that's cool. But now we need to use a texture to plug into that. So let's just move that out of the way. Maybe move these out a little bit. Give ourselves some, small, some more space. And there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and add that cloud texture, which, as I mentioned before, is just a noise texture in cycles. Okay. So let's change the scale down a little bit to 8, or more dense scale anyway, and the detail up to something like 4. Now, a little bit of a warning, procedural textures in cycles can become very slow if you go mad with the detail, so only increase it to as much as you need it. And remember that this is just a piece that will be seen from quite far away, so we don't need to give it too much detail. Anyway, we're going to want to plug that into the roughness of our glossy shader, and you can see it looks really weird kind of like a diffuse surface. And the reason for that is because this noise texture is predominantly white, whereas the glossy shader's roughness, if we put that on one, it's going to look a bit like a diffuse shader as well. So what we need to do there is just change these values around a bit with the color ramp. As you can see, we can play around with how these colors are mapped and that sort of thing. Or we can change the black to something like 0.1, and the white to maybe 0.4 or so. So that's going to be quite a bit darker, and it's going to mean it's nice and rough. We can even increase this a little bit more, I think. That'll be good. Okay, so that is it for the roughness, and everything looks nice. Let's go ahead and try the bump mapping. Now, in Cycles, the bump mapping is very simple. We just need to connect this displacement output over here. And I'm just going to plug in our original leather texture over there. Now, of course, the bump mapping is always very strong by default. So we just need to add a mapping node and change it to multiply. And then this, this value over here basically becomes the strength of the bump map. So let's put that on 0.1 for now, or maybe 0.2. And you can see it's not very strong, which is good. A lot of people always overdo the bump map because they think it looks cool, but in reality, it just makes everything look very fake and CG-like. Okay, I am kind of happy with that for now. Now, the next thing I want to do 
is take a look at these stitches over here. And this is another texture, which is coming from the shoulder rao.png, but the actual image that's stored in Blender is called shoulder lao.png.003, which is, you know, quite obvious. <laughs> so we're just going to go ahead and duplicate our image texture, plug in the same vector over there, and change this to shoulder lao.003. And there we go. This is our stitches for the shoulder. And all we're going to do here is multiply it over the diffuse color, like so. So now our diffuse color is going to look like this. And we can, of course, increase the multiply. And now we've got our stitches running around there, which is great. Very simple and very easy. Um, but to use that with the bump map, because we kind of want these stitches to appear like they're coming out of the surface, we need to mix it with this bump map over here. So let's go ahead and just use a mix RGB node and plug in the stitches over there, which is great. It's extremely strong over here and it's inverted. So rather than mixing it or adding it, I'm actually going to subtract it. And now you can see it's actually coming out of the surface instead of going in, which is what we want. But it's still very strong, so let's try 0.1. That still kind of feels strong. Point, point oh 0.07 is probably good. Okay, now there is one thing I forgot about, and that was to use the color variation noise texture to influence the diffuse color. But that's very simple. We just need to do exactly the same thing as over here. Let's just get some more space. We're going to take the multiply, put it over there. Come on, there we go and plug in the noise texture like that. Now, as you can see, if we leave it on one, it's going to look very weird and dirty, but if we put it on zero, there's no color variation at all. So let's put it in some way in between like that. And OK, I'm kind of happy with that material for now. The last thing I want to do is the dragon stencil, which is kind of an interesting thing to do, because what we really want to do is use this sort of stencil over here to control two almost separate materials. We're going to have our leather material in the black areas and a sort of white plasticky material in the white areas. So let's go ahead and build that white plasticky material first. So I'm going to go and add another, or rather let's just duplicate these glossy shaders and the Fresnel and stuff as well. And go ahead, make this plain white by reducing the saturation. And we need to reduce the roughness of that as well. Maybe, I think that's, well, let's see. Let's go ahead and add our dragon texture first. So that's going to be an image texture. And it is called, what is it called? Dragon.png. Should have guessed that. Dragon.png. So this image texture is white over here and black where the other material would be. So let's just make sure that we clamp that down properly because I believe this isn't pure white. It's a little bit less than pure white. So let's go and move this slider a little bit in. And that's looking pretty good. Okay, so now basically what we want to do is mix this material with this material using this texture over here. And all we need to do then is use a mix shader, another mix shader, and plug that into there. And that is obviously not working because we're using the alpha. And there we go. That is pretty much done. Now again, just like with stitches, I want to take this mask and sort of emboss it a bit to come out of the surface. So we'll do exactly the same thing as we did for the stitches. And that is the shoulder material done. Now we're going to reuse this leather material later on in a couple different places with the other leather on the model, but we're going to do that a bit later with node groups. In the next video, I'm going to show you some subsurface scattering things on the face material.